Okay, we have finished disassembly. Now it's time to put this back together again. So, we want to um, put it all back together, and I'm going to do that without a whole lot of discussion, a little bit. Starts with the frame and the front truck. We're going to insert the bushing there, and we have to hold it in place. Watch that ladder. Now I need the front truck retaining screw. Put it through the hole. And now I'm going to hold that in place. Now I have the front truck. Occasionally the wipers get mashed down and they're not really touching properly, so make sure they're springing slightly. The front one, the clearance is very tight, so it doesn't have to be up by much, but at least a little bit. Then we're going to go to that one lone empty screw hole. So we kind of line it up. There we go. Goes by feel slightly. I'm holding it all together now. Now I'm holding it, the truck and the frame with my fingers. Get my screwdriver. Alright, now this is the screw we super glue to lock it in. So consequently, I'm going to go fairly snugly first. Alright, that's pretty much all the way down. But that's a little too stiff. I want it to be able to track better than that. So I'm going to unscrew it just a few, a millimeter or two. Mm, better. That's too much. Alright, that's it right there. Now, oh, we're covered up. So now I've got to remove the wheels in order to get to the threads of that screw. There it goes on the floor again. Remember, these are the wheels that I have to keep polarity. So I'm going to, oops, my table is not level. This one is oriented with insulated to, the, to my right. Okay, now we can see the threads of that screw. I might want to get a little bit of that, make sure the not any floating debris from super glue. Now get a little bit of super glue. We don't want to put a giant amount. Good heavens, don't do that. We just want to get it on those threads and nothing else. Alright, that's it. That'll be drying. We can go ahead and start the reassembly though. Insulation was right. The cover plate fell on the floor. Okay, I have the cover plate. Has the raised portion goes upward toward the front truck. Not too tight at this point. Remember to check the rear wheel, sort of center that. Now I can tighten it up just a little bit. Alright, front truck is on. Next step is the gearbox. Gearbox obviously has two parts, but there's a slot. The slot goes toward the motor. So that goes this way. I can go ahead and insert the screws. Don't need to tighten them much at this time. 
just snug them down. Okay, gearbox is assembled. The slot is toward the motor. Now I'm going to go back and unscrew these screws until they're just barely catching. What I could do is unscrew it until it starts knocking. And then start tightening just a little past that now. Tighten, loosen, all right we're ready. Now we take the front truck, make sure the gear is in place, main drive gear, put that in place. This part's a little tricky. Got the headless screw, it goes in from this direction, and I have to find the hole, get it started, okay it's started now, and now I've got to move the drive gear, it's got to go through that, and sometimes you have to adjust the drive gear. There it goes. Alright, I'm through the drive gear. I'm now to the threaded part. Now this is important because the heads of these get damaged from poorly doing it. You don't want to over tighten. And you want a screwdriver that's the proper size. Now see, it's wanting to hit. I've got to find the spot where it goes into the slot. So if I force it and it's not ready, then I'm going to damage it. Just there it goes. Now it's gone. All right. I will retighten that in a moment. I've just got it snugged down. Now I can tighten my screws. So I squeeze the gearboxes together just a little bit, not much. And just snug all the screws. And then we'll go back and tighten them. Now I'll go back and make one last tightening adjustment on the headless screw. But don't over tighten it. Obviously it's got to be tight enough to hold, but not too tight. And I want to make sure that that is in place if it is not proper. Like in this particular case it probably needs to come out just a little. There we go. All right. That is ready. Ready to insert the motor now. I'm going to turn this around. Lift the jumper wire out of the way. All right, now the motor, that heat shield is totally loose. It's only held by magnetism of the meat of the motor. 
And so it's got to go over the L angle brace. So the worm shaft goes through the slot. And you can see everything is in place now. It just sort of wants to go to that spot. Carefully install the motor screws. Alright, I've got it pretty much in position. I'm going to very carefully now hold the motor. I don't want to damage anything. Tighten these screws down a bit. Okay. They're on. And then the jumper wire can be bent just a little bit more efficiently. But ultimately, I take my tweezers. There are the socket with two holes. I want to be on the outer hole because this, the wire from the shell goes to the inner hole. That can be tucked away a little bit. I don't want it to get caught in the spinning motor though. We also don't want the shell to obstruct it. Okay. Now adjusting the height of the motor is very critical to these EP2's running well. Since there are no bearings we need to adjust the mesh of the main drive gear and the worm. And you can see through that hole that this probably could be a little lower. The motor is slightly too high. Now the screw that it adjusts the height is right there. It's that black, it's a plastic screw right there. The silvery screw is the one that holds the front truck. So we're going to adjust the height of that screw and you do that with the motor in place. Obviously turning that screw like a normal screw counterclockwise is going to raise the motor. Turning it clockwise, which would be this direction, would lower it. So right now we need to lower it slightly. So I've got a very fine screwdriver that is just a little over half a millimeter in diameter and that screw will fit just inside the threads of that. See I've got it in there. It's, it's in there right now. Now when I turn that, that's lowering. Let's look at the mesh. See if that's a little better. It's a little better. Let's try it again. A little bit lower. Now you can see that that has a little bit less light than when we started. So that's better. Now we'll test run it and make sure in analog just to make sure it runs well. Or I could put the decoder in it. Next we're ready to install the decoder. Plugs in. Ultimately it sits like that. And we're just about done. Let's talk about reinstalling the LED plug in the decoder. Now I've got an undecorated unit and the LED is not actually installed because I still need to be able to paint the shell. But in the painted versions, the LED will be permanently mounted into the shell itself. So the shell would be attached to this wire. But for now, our purposes, the main thing I wanted to teach was orientation. This particular LED has a red wire and a green wire. Other ones have simple copper wires. It's pretty hard to see. The thing I would go by when reassembling is 
the angle because these are installed with the angle toward the motor. So therefore you can see this one goes this way. And of course it's not a disaster if it's backwards and you install it, the LED headlight simply won't come on. Then you might try to reverse the plug the other direction. But if you just pay attention to the angle of that wire and when you disassemble, don't bend that wire very much, then you should have no trouble getting the orientation back. Okay, LED lights are plugged in. Now it's time to plug in the shell wire. There it is. Okay, now, this is a little tricky. The decoder has to go in there, into that slot in the nose. So, I find the way to do that is to very gently lift up the decoder. There's a little extra wire. It's not stiff to allow you to do that. Because you've got to get past these sandboxes. You also want to be very careful of that railing on the back side, so keep the shell kind of close to the motor. Okay, notice I'm just going to tuck the decoder up into that slot in the nose. There it goes. Now it'll fit back. Maybe kind of wiggle sometimes that's it okay shell is on I find it doesn't matter how you take it apart but putting it back together again very gently installing the screw in the nose first helps don't screw it all the way down now those flat head screws go in the rear at the cab. All right, last step is to put the screw covers in. This is the A cab, so I need the ones with one notch. Where's the notch? There it is. The notch is at the end down here, so that's the long end. Long is left. and we're done complete disassembly and reassembly